After pushing back the Confederate defenders at Kinston, Foster's Union forces moved on Whitehall, now known as Seven Springs. On the evening of December 15th, the Federals reached Whitehall, where they planned to take the bridge and destroy the Confederate ironclad CSS Noose, which was currently under construction. General Foster's army, once it uh, left Kenton, had a pretty easy march that day. It was over fairly level ground. It was less swampy than it had been before. And the men were able to uh, supplement their meager rations by uh, foraging the countryside for sweet potatoes and chickens and hogs and things of that nature. Late in the afternoon of the 15th, Foster's Army reaches a point about three or four miles to the east of Whitehall where they go into camp. But Foster is not finished for the day. He knows that a gunboat is being built at Whitehall, will become the CSS Noose. He also wants to burn the bridge across the Noose River to bottle up Confederate troops on the north bank of the river so that they can't recross and harry the rear of his column as he marches along towards Goldsboro. So uh, Foster details three uh, companies of 3rd New York Cavalry, along with two artillery pieces, a section of artillery, to move forward out in front of his camp uh, three or four miles to the little village of Whitehall. These men ride in just before dark and the bridge erupts into flames. Generally, Beverly, uh, Confederate General Beverly Robertson has uh, set fire to the bridge, has been set fire to the bridge. He's in command of Confederate troops at Whitehall. These are the 11th North Carolina, portions of the 59th and 63rd North Carolina. He will be supplemented in the night by uh, reinforcements the 31st North Carolina, but right now these are the only troops at his disposal. They are all on the north bank of the river. These guns are unlimbered. The men uh, get off their horses, they tire their horses up, begin trading fire across the river with Confederates they can't even see. Um, they're also having trouble just seeing the CSS noose. The bridge has been burned, that was part of their mission. They didn't even have to do that. Uh, the Confederates saved them the trouble, but they wanted to destroy the CSS noose. They're having a hard time because they can't see it terribly well. It's very dark now. To remedy this, uh, they go in sheds that are scattered around the town. Remember, Whitehall at that point is a river, a river port. There are hundreds of barrels of turpentine. They roll them down on the bank of the river, set them on fire, and the flames bounce off the low-hanging clouds illuminating the gunboat on the north bank of the river. The Union artillery began blasting away at the noose, but the gunboat proved difficult to damage as it was merely the framework of a vessel. Seeing this, a young volunteer steps forward, Private Henry Butler of the 3rd New York Cavalry. He strips off his clothes, jumps into the Noose River. This is at night, it's December, it's cold, a very brave thing to do any time of year. But he swims to the north bank, he grabs a piece of the still burning bridge, rushes over to the CSS Noose, and tries to set fire to the CSS Noose. He's discovered very quickly by a party of Confederates who train their fire upon him. He does a smart thing now, he throws down his torch, he jumps back into the Noose River, swims back to the south bank of the river, and other than getting a belly full of Noose River water, he's unscathed by the experience. Early on the 16th, Foster sent the 9th New Jersey into the town of Whitehall. There, they engaged the defenders. The 9th later was joined by other regiments in a move aimed at confusing the Confederates about the Union objectives. But most of the Federal Expeditionary Force was kept on the march toward the primary target, Goldsboro. After the infantry had been uh, firing here for about the better part of two hours, they were taking a fair amount of casualties and they began moving up towards, upon orders from Foster, moving towards the riverbank to make it more believable, the faint more believable that they were going to actually try to uh, force a crossing of the river, again to confuse the Confederates as to what their ultimate destination might be. These troops made it so far to the riverbank that some of them actually went the extra mile. They strapped axes to their backs. Some Connecticut troops jumped in the river, swam with axes to the north bank, and cut down large trees that they felled into the river towards the center. Troops on the south bank did the same thing, and they had a, a rudimentary bridge in a fairly short amount of time. They also tore down a couple of sheds and used the lumber from those sheds to try to make this bridge a little bit more believable. They actually thought, the troops actually thought they were going to cross. It was simply a feint, however. Very late in the afternoon, uh, Foster finally has decided he's done all the damage here he's going to do. He's not going to be able to really destroy the CSS noose. And the, the bulk of his column is well on its way towards Goldsboro. So he has his men leave the village of Whitehall, uh, march out of here, and towards their ultimate destination, which is going to be the vicinity of the railroad bridge across the Noose River, three miles south of Goldsboro. As they marched towards Goldsboro, the Federals left behind a heavily damaged town 
as Whitehall was hit by artillery fire from both sides. Confederate losses were fairly light as they fought from defensive positions, with about 11 killed and 50 wounded. Union casualties were some 30 killed and 140 wounded.